Hello, um, this is my very first YouTube video ever, so I'm a little bit nervous. I hope it doesn't come across too much that way. Um, but so this is a video that we have started um, for our Winter's Bloom YouTube channel. If you don't know about Winter's Bloom, um, feel free to check out the show notes at the bottom because there's links to our, we have a website, we have a podcast, we have a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the social media, we're out there. Um, and essentially we just really want to tell people stories. It started with um, mine and Sophia's stories, um, but we really do want to expand it out to include everyone's stories. So if you're ever interested in sharing a story on whatever platform, whether it's writing, whether it's audio, through a podcast, through music, or through a YouTube video, please reach out. We'd love to partner with you. Um, so this, this video is going to be on the topic of grief. Um, and I've been pretty open about this in both, both our website, Winter's Bloom, and our podcast, Winter's Bloom Talks. Um, but my mom passed away in June 2017, so it'll be about three years um, since she passed away. And it was always really important to her that people learn to speak about death and speak about grief more openly. Um, because, you know, she felt that we just don't deal with it as a society, as a Western society, and um, that that can actually increase the feelings of isolation, the feelings of grief, the feelings of loss, um, because you're already feeling isolated and lost because you've lost someone or are grieving something or whatever it is that you're grieving, and then no one around you knows how to deal with it. Um, and of course, that's painting with a broad brush. Um, there are people out there who really do intuitively know or have learned or have been through it themselves. Um, but anyway, that's not the point of this video. Um, what I really want this video to be about is to share my personal experience with grieving, um, just to start that conversation and have that story be out there in case it's helpful to anyone. And maybe it won't be, um, but it's my story and I'm choosing to share it. Um, so basically, there's a whole lot of stuff that happened before she actually passed that um, I might touch on in another video. But to give you the short backstory, um, when I was a freshman in college, she was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer that had metastasized straight to the bone marrow. So when they first caught it, they gave her three months to live. Um, but then she ended up living five years, which was amazing that we got to spend that much more time with her. Um, and you know, that of course was an up and down roller coaster. But again, the point of this video is more to talk about what happened after. Um, the my mom's process of dealing with her herself actively dying was as i mentioned just to share it with everyone uh, she was a buddhist teacher um, so she had this like spiritual community that surrounded her and she was really committed to them being a part of her she called it her death journey because she wanted people to have this conversation so when she did pass um it wasn't just family around her deathbed i mean in the moment of her death it was just family uh, but we invited a lot of her spiritual community, a lot of her friends and family. She was also an artist, so a lot of her artist friends to come and pay their respects. And um, in Buddhist tradition, her body was meant to stay in the house or in the place where she died for three days um, so that her spirit might find a place to rest. And then we were not supposed to have a memorial for her until 49 days later. And um, I'm not Buddhist myself, so I don't know a lot of the meaning behind the, the fact that it's three days and then 49 days before we can memor memorialize her. Um, but that's what we did. We respected her wishes. Um, and, you know, in, I think in the immediate aftermath of her death, she died at 9 a.m. on a Monday, June 7th, I believe. Um, I don't know because her body was still there. I didn't. It didn't really register. I remember vividly um, after she had passed and after we had kind of processed that moment as a family, leaving her room and going immediately to my phone of all things and messaging my really close friends and telling them what had happened. Um, and yeah, that was. I think even in that moment, I was still in shock, like I didn't really realize what had happened. It didn't really hit me until um, they came to take her body away because we had her cremated. She was very um, adamant about being cremated. 
Um, and so the people that we went with, they were a Zen, or they are a Zen Buddhist cremation organization in the Bay Area. And they, part of their service is they come and they take the body. So when they came to take her body, all of her uh, Sangha members, that's the spiritual community that she was a part of, all of them were there. Um, there were nuns, there were artists, um, lots of people who she had touched who were there and they all sang her body out the door. And in her room, it was only family when they came to wrap her body. And that, I, I don't know, I was inconsolable. Um, I was really upset and crying a lot, um, which is understandable, but that's when it really hit me. I think just the fact that her body was leaving, um, that she wasn't physically going to be a part of our household anymore, that, uh, that really hit me hard. Um, after she left, honestly, I mean, I could dig back those memories. Like, I remember, um, going to the crematorium, um, my sister, my brother, and I, we were the ones who pushed the bo button to have her body, um, go into the oven, which I know is probably not the most exciting topic to talk about, talk about. And, um, you know, if this is getting hard for any of you, please feel free to close this. Um, but, you know, for the first year, um, after she passed away, I was consumed with anger. Like, I was very angry, and even to this day, I still feel very angry. And I think, when I think back to it, I think what it was is, basically, after I graduated from university, I had all these ideas about what I wanted to be doing. Um but I ended up kind of modifying those plans and moving back home to live with my mom and dad because I knew that I would regret more not spending the last few years with my mom than anything that I could have been doing, like any travels, any jobs. I just knew I would regret not spending time with my mom more. So, um, Basically, I gave everything for my mom's last few years. I was on call for her all the time. I did end up getting a part-time job, um, but you know, it was really working around her schedule and really just about being there for her and with her in her last few years. Um, and it was it was hard. Like I'm not trying to paint myself as a martyr or a saint or anything. It was really hard. It wasn't all you know, beautiful, like, oh yes, I'm doing this for my mother. Um, there were some times when I just wanted to be anywhere but back at home. Um, and it was also, I mean, partly because I'm young and like I wasn't having my youthful life. And also partly because it was really, really hard to see her suffering. Um, so yeah, so basically after she passed, I think, I think the last few years of her life when I was living at home with her, all the ways that I had defined myself had just broken down because I, my life was hers, basically. Um, and so when she passed, there was no reason for my identity. That sounds dramatic, but because all of my life for the past few years had been for her um, and with her, now that she was gone, I had to redefine who I was and I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to redefine who I was without my mom. Um, and so I was angry and there were a lot of ways in which I really hated people my age. Um, there were a lot of ways that I loved it. Like I, I was working at this sandwich shop, I was working at a few different outdoor um, nature activity organizations and I, I really did love my coworkers. I really enjoyed them. But there were times when I was so angry and judgmental about the things that they would complain about. Like sometimes they would complain about some boy drama or they would complain about how like their parents were being shitty or they would complain about some kind of friend drama. And I would just like internally see, I'd be like, what the, like, what are you complaining about? You know, you have nothing to complain about. Um, yeah, and that was really hard. And then, um, so I spent a year after she died living at home, working. Um, and what was really helpful for me actually was living with my dad. And I know that I have the privilege to have a really close um, relationship with my family. And I think that my mom's death really brought us closer together. 
Um, and so living with my dad was really helpful because my tendency when I grieve is to uh, really like balloon inside, or balloon is the wrong word, but cave in on myself. Um, and that's definitely a helpful coping strategy, but sometimes what was really beneficial about living with my dad is that he could tell when that was happening and when all I wanted to do was be in my room like I would lash out I would be angry or I would start crying or whatever and I just wanted to be by myself in my room just like who doing who knows what he would force me to sit there with him and we would talk about it and we would cry and we would be upset and then afterwards it felt a hundred times better it still sucked and I was still angry and I was still sad but I really do appreciate that my dad forced me to sit there with him. And in the moment, in that moment of him being like, no, you have to sit here with me, I was so pissed. I was like, no, I just want to be in my room. But yeah, that was, that was really helpful. So I don't know if that will work for everyone, but that was a really helpful thing. Um, I realized that I am running a little bit um, on time, and so I'll just try to try to run through... The last two years as quickly as I can while giving it justice um, but basically after spending that year at home with my dad um, I ended up pursuing a master's degree in outdoor education and this was actually abroad it was in Scotland and that was very beautiful and very challenging in many ways um, grieving for the last year at home was great um, but I saw my mom everywhere in all of the memories of places we had been and things we had done throughout my whole life um, because she was, you know, that's where we grew up, that's where we had all these memories. And for that first year, it was really great to wallow in that. Um, but I think it was really important for the second year to physically get out. I realize that's not necessarily possible for everyone. Um, you know, I was at a place where I could do that financially, where I could do that spiritually, emotionally, physically. Not everyone can do that. So this is my story, and it was helpful that I was able to get out. Um, it was also very challenging um, because I was far from family, far from my support network. Um, I was able to live with a really great friend, which was awesome. She was super helpful, very sensitive, very thoughtful. I think if I hadn't been living with her, it would have been very challenging. Um, but it was great to have this space that was not attached to my mom, not attached to my family. And it was something that was for me. Um, I mean, also for my future and hopefully for my children um, and other children that I interact with. But um, yeah, it was it was very challenging to be so far away, but it allowed me to um, kind of start redefining myself um, in a place that was totally neutral of my mom and also to learn how to honor her in that space and how to actively bring her in that space and not just have her there, if that makes sense. Um, and then, since then, um, you know, the past year, the past year I've definitely felt a lot less anger. Um, it does still come up, and, but now when I miss her, it's more, it's sad, but it's not going to bring a tear to my eye. It's one of those things where I almost like... I want to ask her something I'm like oh I really want to ask my mom about this and I remember that she's gone and it's weird that I even forgot in the first place um she I I feel very lucky though because she visits me a lot in dreams um and a lot in my daydreams and thought processes and stuff um so yeah I know I don't know it's it's a tough thing grief um I do know that it has been amazing to connect with other people who have also lost loved ones, particularly who have lost their mothers. Um, I met more people than I expected. I think that's what also helped me shift my mentality, is for a long time I was like, no one else understands. Everyone, like, everyone else my age still has their mom. Everyone else my age still has a complete family. Um, and that was, you know, fostering a lot of my anger. But when I started to meet people who were either a little bit older than me or the same age as me or even younger than me who had also lost their moms, specifically their moms, um, I'm talking about in this situation, there's all kinds of loss, but just realizing that there are a lot of people out there who have lost family members, um, that helped me realize that it's not, it wasn't just me. Um, anyway, 
so I will end I will end this video here um, I could go on talking about this forever and maybe I will have another video at some point um, about grieving while my mom was still alive um, if you have any stories of grief of losing loved ones losing anyone that you would like to share please reach out to us wintersblooming at gmail.com or through any of the links uh, down below right down there um, please reach out to us, even if you just want to talk to us personally, even if you don't want to share it on one of our platforms. Um, but I personally love to connect with people who have lost loved ones. Um, so yeah, please reach out, and if you do want to share your story, let us know. Uh, also, if you have any questions, concerns, want to hear anything more, want to hear anything less, let us know. Um, and with that, goodbye! <laughs>